Hello again, and welcome back to Illegally Sighted. This is BGFH, and I am back again for kind of a quick little bonus video again. Uh, I'm recording this on Friday the 13th, believe it or not, of January 2017. And I felt that I wanted to give my thoughts, to, you know, to give my two cents, just like everybody else is at this, mo at this moment, on last night's late night N Nintendo Switch presentation so I, I couldn't man I, it was really funny because leading up to that they released that trailer last year and I thought it was like way later in the year but it was like in October which was crazy it just me it shows you how quickly time is just flying by um, but they had you know they'd announced in December that oh okay we're gonna have this uh, presentation uh unveiling more stuff about the switch on january 12th <clears throat> and they did it actually started 10 o'clock my time so eh, a little bit of a late night last night but uh you know hey no not too bad and i just want to give my thoughts on what i thought so we got to learn a lot more about the nintendo switch i have the nintendo switch kind of presentation page on in the background here I'm not going to load any videos or any other audio because God knows how crazy they are with uh, copywriting. So we're just kind of giving you a little bit of stuff to look at in the background. A little backdrop here. But this is just going to be me kind of giving my thoughts on uh, the presentation and the upcoming system. Uh, yeah, that's coming out quite soon, actually. So they started the presentation pretty smartly, actually. Um, they came right out and they said, yeah, we're here. Uh, we're going to give you some information, and they really, they started by saying the release date and the price. And the price, uh, well, the release date is going to be March 3rd. People were saying that they were, you know, people were thinking it's going to release in March. And I thought it was going to be way later, like in mid-late March, but uh, March 3rd. And there's basically going to be two SKUs or two versions of it essentially they're the same system um r retailing for 299 people were thinking 250 i was kind of hoping for 250 based on some of the things we were hearing about the specs in it but you know 300 for kind of a combination like you know your kind of what you want to do with like your playstation 4 and your vita you know like oh i want to have a home system and then oh okay i want to have a portable and it's all the same thing that's kind of cool, and I kind of want something like that. That'd be kind of neat. So, two ninety nine. The main difference between the two of them is basically just they're the same system, but they have different Joy-Con colors. Remember those little? Uh, let's see. Look at the picture. Um, like right here, uh, on the first picture here. The little Joy-Cons, those are your tiny little controllers that you can either put in the middle grip thing or you can attach to the side of the Switch itself. The Switch part, of course, is the actual tablet screen thing. And it is uh, the dock is actually the thing that you hook up to your TV when you want to hook it up to your TV. So that you know, I like I said, I was hoping for two fifty, but three hundred, you know, for what it is, I don't know. I mean, you look at you know, you look at like a uh, Nvidia Shield or something like that. It's roughly two fifty, you know. By the time you get the controller added and whatever, um, <clears throat> you know, it's roughly comparable. So I don't have too much of a problem with that. And then so in the presentation, they talked about like the. A lot of the hardware and how this thing can work, you know, I, I touched on that early in another video last year, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, you know, but basically you can hook it up to your TV, play it that way, you can play it in like a desktop mode, you flip a little stand out in the, from the back of it and you can pop off the Joy-Cons and play it that way, you know, you can use two separate little of the Joy-Cons and you can, you know, play simpler uh, two-player games, you can play it of course kind of as a handheld unit just attach the joy cons to the control or to the uh, switch itself so not bad um and they talked a lot about the joy cons you know, they give you more in-depth detail on like what they do they've got all kind you know they've got your 
analog sticks, your buttons, um, you got your L and R buttons, which actually are on them. Um, and they do have all, like I said, all these sensors in them. There's, there are like your accelerometers and things like that. So you kind of have like your Wiimote functionality. They kind of went like, oh, you know, we did the history of like, hey, we have the A, B buttons, the X, Y buttons. Then we added, you know, motion control. And yes, it does have a touch screen. Um, the Switch does have a touch screen. And it's finally a capacitive touch screen. About damn time. Um, uh, you know, I just, I do not like this, the resistive, uh, <coughs> screens of like the Wii U or the 3DS. Um, high time they got on board with that, so that's cool. Um, one thing I'm not very keen on is early in the presentation, they did talk about battery life, and they're estimating between two and a half and six hours, which... Eh, I, yeah, you know, I was hoping at least like four to six or four to eight, maybe, you know, you look at a, I mean, granted, you don't have like physical buttons on a phone pretty much these days, but like, you know, my iPhone, I can run like watch hours of video. Um, granted, I'm, it's just video. It's not processing, but I can actually play like, uh, pretty good looking games on my phone or my iPad. I'm going to use my phone because it's closer to the size because you got a 6.2 inch screen for the Nintendo Switch. And, you know, it's 5.5 for my iPhone 7 Plus. So it's a little bit bigger than that, but not much. Um, so it's a little bit bigger than that, kind of in between like your Nexus 7, your 7-inch tablets, or your iPad mini, and your, you know, your uh, iPhone 6 Plus. So that's okay. But two and a half to six hours, like six hours, you know, I'm kind of okay with that. I would like a little longer, but two and a half? Man. <clears throat> you know, that's barely, you know, you, you can use that on a fairly short road trip, you know? Or, you know, you're away from anything, and... So I don't know, you know, I don't know if they're going to have some sort of like battery, you know, I haven't kept them, I, I've been, I've been at work all day. So, you know, I've checked Twitter a couple times, you know, I've looked at a couple real brief things. I don't know exactly what kind of accessories they're going to eventually come out with, but like, I'm guessing you're either going to like have some sort of third party accessory maybe that you can charge or everyone's walking around, you know, with the Pokemon Go thing being so crazy last year. People are, you know, having their USB charging stations, you know, your little portable battery pack. So it's, okay, well, I'll plug that sucker in and charge the Switch, because uh, I think it charges via micro USB. So maybe that is an option, but it's still clunky as hell. You know, then you're carrying that, and yeah, yeah I don't know, I guess you're going to have your bag anyway, but whatever. So, not thrilled about that. Um, wish battery life was a little bit better. But the controllers seem interesting. You know, the, the, the thing that they talked about with the controllers is like, you know, you have your motion sensors and stuff like that, but then you have this IR sensor, what they talked about, where it's like, it kind of, it can see sort of like what you're doing. So, like, if it can tell, like, if you're doing rock, paper, scissors is what they were saying. So, it can kind of see little gestures that you do if you aim it um, at somebody or something. I don't know what the, the, you know, the whole depth of that is. And then they talked about how, like, they're kind of like their new rumble technology, for lack of a better word, but, like, their haptic feedback, you know, they kind of did this thing where it's like, oh, well, here we have a glass of ice, a uh, glass with ice cubes in it. And with the the way that you can feel the haptic feedback in the joy cons, you know, they're talking about like, Oh, okay, well you can actually tell like where they are in the, you know, in the, in the controller. Or like if I was pretending it like it was a glass of ice cubes, you can tell that there are no oh, two or three ice cubes in there. I don't know. I mean, that could be cool. I don't know if it's just kind of a weird gimmick and if it's not going to be much more than the, you know, like a current haptic feedback on an iPhone or a, you know, a current con console controller, I don't know. But they, they kind of made a big deal out of it, so maybe there's some extra subtlety to it, I don't know. Um, so yeah, your console itself is going to come with, you know, your uh, 
your console, your, your Nintendo Switch, your base, your two Joy-Cons, your HDMI cord, your power cord, and uh, you know, depending on what I said, which ones you want to get. Do you want to get the gray controller model, or do you want to get, there's one with like red and blue kind of neon Joy-Cons. So you got your choice there, and there's going to be more later. They said there's going to be like little wrist straps, so when you're playing motion games, you don't, you know, again, the Wii... You know, the whole Wii thing again over. You don't want to, like, accidentally chuck your <laughs> your uh, Joy-Con wherever. But that stuff was okay. Uh, then they talked about some first-party and first-party games. And there's some old and some new stuff. I'm not sure what I think about some of it. Um, there's a game called ARMS, which is really strange. It's like a... <laughs> it's a weird, like fighting game thing that is like third person think of it almost like a perspective from like punch out but you got these like stretch armstrong arms and you're like waving your hands around and like you can punch but then you can like uh, it's freaking weird man you just have to go look up some footage of it i mean it looks entertaining but i don't see it necessarily as a as a 60 dollar game that kind of seems like eh, this could be some kind of a component of like of a bigger package, you know. So their other game that they really showed is this one-two switch, and I'm not entirely sure what to make of this until I actually watch some more footage. So, you know, the Wii had its Wii Sports, and I was actually now that they, I was thinking about it, if you have your motion controls and stuff. Having a Wii Sports would actually be kind of smart because I wouldn't mind having a little, you know, a version of Wii Bowling or, you know, the bowling thing that I could just play at home on my TV or if I take my Switch somewhere, I could, you know, play a version of, uh, you know, call it, I don't know, well, Switch Sports sounds kind of dumb, but you could call it something. But, um... They're not doing that. They're calling this one-two switch, and it's supposed to be this weird, like, casual party game, mini game thing. They showed this like Wild West, like, quick draw thing where they're like staring each other down, and then you know you quick draw and shoot. But their whole thing with that is like most of the time you're not supposed to actually look at a screen. You're actually supposed to be like watching your opponent. So each one of you has a Joy-Con, and then you do something for a mini game, and I, I don't know the whole details of it, but it's like they're kind of stressing that, like, you know, it's meant for like a party, a group environment, but like, you know, you're actually watching and interacting with the people, not maybe so much the screen, um, be it on your big TV or if you take the, the Switch tablet with you. So, again, I, I can see like one, two Switch. And arms being like a combo package, or like, you know, or is one big deal, and then sixty bucks might be a little more respectable. But I just don't know. Um, so they had those. Then they had Splatoon Two, which actually looked pretty good. Um, I have Splatoon for the Wii U, and I played it for a couple weeks, and I liked what I played. Um, but I actually had some internet connectivity issues. Like, sometimes I'd try to get in and the damn thing just wouldn't connect or it would drop or something, so I kind of quit. And I never got back into it. So, you know, I, they say you can use the gyroscope controls, but I'm hoping that they also give you the option to have the two analog sticks because I don't know if I want to do the gyroscope controls um, that way. But, you know, Splatoon, it, it's a fun game. Um, I don't know if it's someone that I would get right away, but it, you know, it would be something that I could eventually kind of look into, you know, new weapons, you can dual wield, um, new maps, new power-ups, all that kind of stuff you'd expect from a sequel. Some people don't like the bright colors and stuff, but actually, you know, I actually kind of like it, you know, it's kind of this friendlier, like crazy, you know, people call it like a Nickelodeon, like the slime from the 90s, like you can't do that on television and Double Dare, that kind of thing. Kind of has that really bright kind of thing. And it's just a really weird, zany kind of game. I, I like it. Um, so that's kind of neat. 
they did show off some third party stuff. Um, there's actually quite a few RPGs. There's quite a few like uh, was it Dragon Quest games coming out. There's the um, Fire em- new Fire Emblem game. There's a oh god. Uh, bah, 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 bah. I can't remember the other one. It's a it's a sequel. I'm not into Japanese RPGs, especially like turn based ones, all that much. So that's why I kind of forget. Uh, the, the the thing came out late in the Wii U's lifespan. The first game. Um, I I'm sorry. If I think about it later, I'll I'll, I'll tell you. But I it, it's another RPG. I mean, it looked good. If you like RPGs. It looks like it's going to have a decent selection of them over the next few months, so that's not bad. Um, now, the launch lineup. Here's where I'm kind of disappointed. Um, of course, you're going to. They did reveal that yes, Zelda Breath of the the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is going to be a launch title on March third. Huzzah! Yeah, I am pumped for that. I've been looking forward to that game since they announced it for the Wii U like three, four years ago. And the game, you know, every trailer I see or every little thing, every time I see it, it looks just more beautiful. And, you know, people were kind of complaining prior to the announcement. They're like, you know, there's leaks and stuff like, oh, this system isn't going to be very powerful. And, um, you know, it's it's just it's not going to be very good because, there's you know, it's just an old GPU in it. You know, as long as you're not going for, like, your photorealistic graphics, so, you know, art style can carry a game a long way. And a couple of the games that I saw look damn good. So, I'm perfectly, you know, you can show your Nintendo art style in HD better now? Sure, you know, I'm totally fine with that, you know. the They did, they did also mention that, you know, your uh, the Switch is going to be, you can play 720p uh, when it's just, you're playing the tablet part, but then when you dock it, you can play in, it will kind of give it a little bit of extra horsepower, and you can play in 1080p. So it does scale things back a little bit when you're on the smaller screen to conserve battery life. Um, I wish it conserved a little more, but there you go. You know, but they did confirm that, yes, you can, you know, you can get 1080p out of it, on a TV and I don't even care about 4k because I, you know, if you watched my 2016 summary video, uh, there's all kinds of issues with that and I'm perfectly fine with 1080p. So, Hey, you know what? Make it run good. Make it look good. We're actually get some bright looking games. I'm totally cool with that. Um, but Zelda breath of the wild. I can't wait to play that an open world Zelda, you know, kind of like people were calling it like, you know, like an Elder Scrolls Zelda kind of thing where, you know, you're not just, I'm looking forward to it. It just looks really cool. You know, we saw some, a whole bunch of footage of it last E3, saw a couple trailers. I didn't watch all of the E3 stuff because I didn't really, you know, I just wanted to see enough to get a little bit of an idea of the mechanics, but I'm sold. I want to play it. It looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other launch games, though, we're getting like a Skylanders, which I don't really care about. A Just Dance, which I really don't care about. And the um, One Two Switch, which might be interesting, but I really don't see it as worth sixty bucks. Um, so, and that's it. Like, they talk a lot about, I'm going to mention a couple other games here, but, like, the launch day, it sounds like that's pretty much it. There's probably going to be some virtual console stuff, which I'll talk about in a minute. But as far as key Switch releases, like, I, I, it's kind of like, it reminds me of the old N64 days where you had, like, what do we have, Mario 64 and Pilot, Pilot Wings, I think it was? Maybe Wave Race. I don't know if that was launch or launch window, but like the N64 had a really, I mean, Mario 64 was amazing and that carried the system for several months, but, and Zelda's going to, looks like it's going to do, have to do the same thing. Splatoon 2 is a summer game. I don't know exactly when ARMS is coming out. Um, then you got your RPGs. Uh, I don't know how far they are in. I don't know if they're even this year, but 
they're coming. We're going to get a port of Ma like um, Mario Kart 8 because, you know, not many people owned a Wii U. So instead of making a whole new Mario Kart, they're like, well, we're just going to update. I mean, to be fair, Mario Kart 8 was really good. I own it for the Wii U. Um, you know, maybe an updated version and I can play it anywhere. Combination home and portable. I'd be okay with that. That works. Um, that's going to be coming out later this year. Um, um, ba -ba -ba -bum. Todd Howard did mention that, yes, Skyrim is coming to the Nintendo Switch, and I have mixed feelings on that. Um, yeah, it's cool that it is. I mean, it's, it's a big, meaty, open-world game. Um, I don't think it's coming till this fall, but, um, uh, Skyrim is, yes, it's still really popular, but people who want to play Skyrim have probably played Skyrim. I know I have, uh, granted I haven't finished it. Actually, the only thing that kind of sounds compelling about that is I, when I played Skyrim for a while, I got into it. And then I kind of fell off because there was a bunch of other stuff going on coming out. And I think I either updated computers or I had to weird I had to reformat my computer or change something and I lost my save file. And I said, oh, I'm not no, I'm not starting over right now. So I have not finished the story in Skyrim. I have not put near as much time into Skyrim as I did Oblivion, uh, the early the previous Elder Scrolls game. I played the crap out of Oblivion, um, and I would like to devote more time to Skyrim. And having, I admittedly, you know, having one that I could play on a TV or like take it with me and play for a little while somewhere. So, you know, if if I saw it on sale, eventually I might pick it up. What the hell, you know? But you know, with all the mods and everything, I'll just play it on my PC. You know, where it'll look beautiful and I have a big screen and whatever. But you know. It's, that's, the main thing, here's the other thing about Skyrim, is that I'm glad that Bethesda is supporting the Switch. And what I'm hoping is that maybe, you know, they're, since they're sp supporting it with Skyrim, maybe in the future, though, Bethesda will be open to putting some of their other content or other properties onto the Switch, which would be a great thing because Bethesda has some pretty great titles. Now, the downside is what's probably more likely going to happen, unfortunately, is that, okay, so they released Skyrim on the Switch. Well, like I said, everybody who, who has wanted to play Skyrim has probably played Skyrim on a other console or PC before. So if Skyrim doesn't sell as well on the Switch, then that will, that will discourage bethesda from releasing future titles because well skyrim didn't sell well so why should we put any of other stuff there and then you're going to get the wii and wii u all over again which is a potential you know it's a sadly it's a potential thing that i could see happening you know so it's like you're kind of damned if you do damned if you don't because it's like well you know you want you want to support them you know but if people don't buy the game then they won't release anymore you know, but so you kind of want people to buy Skyrim so that maybe they do bring stuff over, but it's like, well, we've already played Skyrim. You know, it's kind of like, again, the Wii U, they put all these, like, old, like, Mass Effect and Batman Arkham games. Like, I had already, we'd already played those, like, a year or two before when the Wii U came out. So, Nintendo, sadly, is kind of repeating some of its stuff here, and we actually got a way weaker lineup, you know, or not near as many titles as any of the pri previous consoles. Um, but like I said, Zelda's going to, if it's half as open and, you know, meaty as I'm thinking it might be, I mean, I'll probably play the, I'll probably, you know, with the, the time that I do have, you know, with everything else going on, work and um, videos and VR and all kinds of stuff, I'm sure I'll be playing Zelda for a long time. I'm probably, you know, the days of being able to, you know, sit down and blow through Zelda in a week probably not going to happen for me. It's just not the way it's going to go. And I don't really want want to uh, binge it like that. I kind of want to savor it, you know, and just keep playing it. Um, 
one other thing they did mention about the controllers is that you know you there is a share button which they said you can share screenshots but not video right now they said eventually you'll be able to share a video and i don't know you know they said with social media so i don't know if you're going to be able to link your youtube account and if i could upload some direct some direct feed uh switch clips i don't know eventually but we'll see um you know they so the other main game that i have to talk about of course you know zelda march 3rd excellent can't wait the you know in that teaser trailer last year they talked about or there was a glimpse of a new mario game and it is real it is called super mario odyssey and it looks pretty awesome I don't know what is going on. I don't know exactly what the premise is, but it seems like this weird mishmash of like, like Mario is in, like it started out in what really baffled me. There's like a a level where Mario is in this like New York ish city, like jumping off of cars and like wall jumping up buildings and jumping across rooftops. I'm like, Oh dude, what is this? Like real life Mario parkour? That actually sounds kind of awesome. But then they showed like jungle levels and desert levels, kind of, you know, more traditional Mario fare. But like, you know, I, the the urban environment actually kind of intrigued me just like with Mario's move set. And like, if you have a playground, like the Mario 64 castle, I can't tell you how much time I spent just dinking around in the Mario 64 castle courtyard. That was so much fun. You know, the, you, you could just make your own jump challenges and just mess around out there, you know. I mean, granted, 3D was new back then, but, like, it was just really fun. You know, I remember just jumping off of trees and trying to make weird jump combos, and, like, you go into the room or the little courtyard. Uh, there's another room inside the castle where you go outside, and there's all the, where the Boo ghost house is. And I'd always try to like jump on all the ghosts and see how how many ghost the jumps I could do on the ghosts before I actually hit the ground, like bouncing off of the ghost, just stupid stuff like that. But like I would love like being in like just an open city environment and just playing like swinging off of light poles and jumping up buildings and going across across rooftops. That sounds really fun. That sounds actually really kind of fun. Um, but yeah, like I said, the, you know, just check out the video for it. I, like I said, I'd love to show it, but like I said, I know I'm going to get slapped with the copyright if I do, so I'm not gonna. Um, but that's not coming out, they said, until holiday 2017, and that's definitely, I think, going to be a system seller. I know I'm interested in it. Um, so yeah, those are really the main things, um, that I know so far about the switch um you know, i talked about the games talked about the controllers oh online i did hear a little bit today um but i haven't looked too closely into it like i said this is mainly my impressions of last night's event with a couple other tidbits that i know from today but the system and online there's a couple other things that kind of annoy me so Storage is cheap. I think we can all agree right now. I mean, you can... Earlier this week, I saw a I saw something on Twitter for a 4 terabyte Passport external hard drive. 4 terabyte for 109 bucks. Um, you can get like a 128 gig SD card for probably 100 bucks. You could get... I mean, storage is cheap. You know, you get an internal hard drive, you can get like obscene hard... Probably... You know, storage for under 100 bucks. The Nintendo Switch is only going to have 32 in gigs of internal storage again. How in the hell does that even make sense? Like, especially if you're going to think about doing anything digital. I mean, yes, granted, it does support up to 256 gig uh, SD cards. I think micro SD cards, uh, if I remember correctly. 
which is good. I'm glad they have that type of mainstream external storage and don't pull a Sony and pull, make us buy your crappy, like, proprietary, super expensive uh, memory cards like the PS Vita did. That was a crock. But, um, like, why would you have, like, w with as cheap as storage is, why would you put 32 gigs, like, if you put, you know, if I don't know if, if there's going to be, like, can if I can do Netflix or Hulu or YouTube or any sort of apps or, you know, game saves can be kind of big. Like, are we going to, do the cartridges, can we save the games to the cartridge? Or are we saving them to the system itself? And then, you know, any kind of digitals, if you do virtual console, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to have the eShop. Um... You know, maybe I can get some of the cartridges or the things digitally instead of buying them on the little cartridges. I don't know, but like, 32 is just laughably bad. I mean, like, 500 gig is like the minimum that you'd want to go. I mean, like the you know the Xbox One, the PS4, they're like 500 gig, one two terabyte drives internally. I mean, I know the Switch isn't as big, but I mean, like I said, flash storage is cheap. And for the, for the love of God, at least put 128 or 256 storage in there. I mean, come on. Y you know, I'm, and make it at least equivalent to like an iPad or an iPhone. Like I got a 128, or no, I have a 256 this time, uh, iPhone 7 Plus. Um, storage is, I understand maybe not going super high, maybe, but like 32? Really? Um that's kind of dumb. And then they did mention as far as online, I'm like I said, I'm I've always been a little skeptical whether they're when it whether Nintendo's actually going to implement online correctly this time. And it sounds like it's going to be janky as hell as usual because so if you want to like chat or communicate, I guess you have to use like the system itself doesn't really do much of that and you're supposed to use a smartphone app for managing friends and chatting or something which okay as a extra component would be okay like if i could you know i mean the xbox they have a xbox app for the iphone i've used it um <clears throat> but like to have that as your only option that seems kind of weird um they said they are going to have an online service where you can match make and you can play games and all that kind of stuff. And it's going to be free to start with. But then this fall, they haven't given a price, but then they said they are going to switch to a paid, uh, like a paid subscription for their online service. And I don't know, you know, Microsoft can kind of get away with it. Sony can kind of get away with it because they actually have a fairly decent infrastructure. You know, like Xbox Live, basically, you know, even on the 360 days, like they showed how to do an online system right. You have your gamer tag, you have parties, you have voice chat, you have text chat, you can leave messages you know, you can, like I said, party up and join somebody's game. And it was all based on your gamer tag. You know, no, oh, this this game has a certain friend code, and then this one you got to use a different code. I'm like, there was none of that. Just unify it through your thing. And it, you know, and then Sony came on and did it fairly similarly. Um, and Nintendo, even with their... Even with Super Mario Run and their recent 3DS stuff, they still use friend codes, individual game friend codes. Even after they killed Club Nintendo and made this supposed unified My Nintendo account. <sighs> have they learned, have they not learned anything? I, you know, Nintendo is just one of those companies like, you love them? But you hate them at the same time. I mean, you love them, but they just do, like, for every one great, like, amazing thing that they do, they just do some really stupid stuff. So, yeah, I don't know what that, I mean, I don't know if I'd be willing to pay for a subscription to an online Nintendo service because they have not proven in the least that 
they can have something that would be worth paying for. I'm not going to pay for an online, you know, an online service that's all kinds of jank and it's not unified and you still got to like put individual, you know, codes in just to access each individual game and you know, you got Xbox 1 and PS4. Another thing that they just announced today Nintendo announced is like, "Oh, well, you can get a free game every month and play it." But at the end of the month, <laughs> the game goes away and you have to purchase it or you can't play it anymore. Um, you know, as far as your virtual console, they're doing that. So like you said, you know, let's say like Super Metroid comes out in April. You can play Super Metroid for that month for free. Um, but then let's say they release another game in May then you can play that game for free, but then if you want to keep playing Super Metroid anymore, you still have to buy it. Both Sony and Microsoft, as long as you're subscribed to their services, I can't tell you how many free games I've just queued up and have downloaded onto my Xbox One that I haven't even touched yet. I've either played them on another on PC or... I don't know if I'm going to want to play them, so I just, you know, hey, they're free at the moment, so I'll just grab them for a rainy day and check them out eventually. Um, I've amassed quite a library um, that way. So, you know, they're, I guess they're trying, but they still, I'm very skeptical <laughs> that they're going to, that they're not going to biff this up again. Um, you know, I guess only time will tell, like, and they didn't, my other problem with the presentation that they had last night was like that when they talked about third party stuff, the first part, you know, the, the part where they talked about the switch and the first party games, that stuff was, it was cheesy. You know, they love going back to the let's switch to the, like they would use the switch pun for everything. It was amusing at first, but it kind of got old, but it was amusing. You know, it was okay. The second half, where they talked about the third-party stuff, came off... It, so, it just seemed really bad. Like, even the Splatoon, like, you know, this weird... I forget what they even called it. Like, the Splatoon Research facility, or facility. It just came off as really kind of stilted and just not... Kind of dumb. But then when they went into third-party stuff... They didn't show any games. They had a quick sizzle reel of like maybe 10, 15 games or something that they showed where they showed like, you know, five second clips of them. But then they had like Sega come out for a, for a minute. They had uh, Suda51, the maker, you know, the guy who made like No More Heroes, which they were supposed to be getting a No, a no More Heroes for the for the Switch, which I love the first No More Heroes. I'm I'm okay with another one of those. But they didn't show anything other than artwork, uh, like you know, an artwork of Travis Touchdown. Um, oh, there was you know there was the Todd Howard thing for Bethesda. Uh, there was one or two other ones that just oh the EA one that was it. Everything just felt really like stiff and awkward and like you're trying. You're, it's your first real unveiling of a new system. You know, don't you think that you should show, like, don't just say, you know, I mean, a lot of this stuff was like, we think the Switch is interesting, and I think we are going to try to see how we can develop something for it. Like, it just came off as really stiff, and they didn't have anything to show. Take some of those games in the sizzle reel, expand them for a minute or two, and show us what some of those games are, you know? There was an F Zero looking thing. I don't know if that was F Zero or if it was like some port of this fast racing Neo game that was on the Wii U. I don't know what it was, but they all the the talking head stuff, the third party stuff. I really didn't like at all. And like going back to the online, like I wish they would have shown show me what the system interface is going to be like. You know, show me you know, going, looking at my game library, show me, uh, looking, show me a little bit of virtual console, 
you know, show me what that interface is going to look like. I still don't know if, you know, if I have games for the 3DS or the Wii or the Wii U, am I going to have to once again buy the same games for the 10th time? I still don't know that. So there's still a lot of questions up in the air. There's still a lot of things that kind of annoy me and that I'm skeptical about. But that said, this is why it's really strange being a Nintendo fan. Because like I said, I grew up with Nintendo. I love Nintendo. I want to love Nintendo. Um, they do just dumb things that frustrate me. Kind of more so recently, but you know when they hit it, when they get it right, they really knock it out of the park. But despite all the things that I've complained about, I'm still genuinely interested and genuinely kind of excited about the Switch because, like I said, it's it's a des it's a console home console system that at any time I can just pick it up and go into a different room like the Wii, or I can take it with me. Oh, you know what? I'm going to take this with me, and I'm going to play a little bit of Zelda during lunch. You know, when I take lunch, I'm going to play 20 minutes of Zelda and finish this puzzle or something. Um, yeah, I can just, I can take it with me. You might, you're probably not going to get the, you know, the full AAA games support on the system just because it's not as powerful. But things that come out on, like a lot of these smaller games, indie games and stuff that come out on Steam, a lot of the things that, you know, where they'll come out on Steam and they'll actually come to the Vita, even though so the Sony hasn't really supported the Vita in like at least two years. Um, I could see some of that coming to the Switch, you know? A lot of these 2D platformers, like I like to play on, uh, I've played some of them on my PC via Steam. Um, having one that I could either play on my TV or take with me on the Switch, that's actually quite uh, quite compelling, you know? Um, I think it'd be a great place for, and maybe less crowded place for indie games to get noticed because there's so much shit on Steam right now. I mean, Steam is great, don't get me wrong. I love it, but, like, there are so many games. Like, I used to be able to sort of keep up with, like, oh, okay, there's some interesting games coming out this week. And now there's like 50 of them a day, and I just like, pff, I'm not even, like, I just kind of have to see if anything comes up on the main page that catches my eye or listen to podcasts or follow certain things to be like, I, what did they say last year? Was it 40 or 60% of all games released on Steam came out in 2016? And Steam's been around since like 03. So, yeah, I mean, there's just getting to be so much crap. Like early access stuff and just broken games and just all kinds of... I mean, there's a lot of great stuff too, but there's just a lot of crap to sift through. So I could see, you know, especially some of the smaller devs, if they can get in with Nintendo on their platform... You know, some of these less intensive games that would play well on the Switch, I could see that being a great place for that kind of stuff to happen. So, Mario and Zelda are definitely my two, like, I've been wanting to play Zelda ever since I saw that first, you know, tease forest footage, um, what, three, four years ago during a quick E3 tease. Um, you know, I love Zelda games, and it looked really cool. Um... I said the the city Mario parkour thing just looks cool. Some of the other levels look good, but I just I kind of get a kick out of the city part. Um, I think you know, that's going to be more of an open kind of a callback to like Mario sixty four, Mario Sunshine, and I'm thinking that might be really fun. Um, Splatoon could be good. They didn't show anything as far as like a you know Metroid or uh, anything like that. It's a pity. What is it like? This year was the twenty. Or was it thirtieth anniversary of uh, Metroid? And it just fizzled. Or no, last year was twenty sixteen. Was it was like the thirtieth anniversary? And they blocked AM two R. They shut that down. They released Metroid Prime. Was it Federation Force, which for the DS or three DS, which 
didn't look good at all. And I love Metroid. I love the original Metroid, Super Metroid, Metroid Prime. Sad. Um, but yeah, I you know... And I know that, like I said, now that I know there's a touchscreen, I'm sure there's going to be a new Mario Maker level. And the Mario Maker where I can play it at home or I can create levels and then make make friends. I can take my, my Switch with me and I can torture people with levels that I've downloaded or played. Or I can play, you know, create them somewhere else and then play them at home, whatever. That's going to be great. Um, yeah, so... It's slim pickings for the first little while. You know, there's going to be an NBA game, like NBA, was it 2K17 or something? Um, there's a few other titles that people have announced. But mainly Zelda and Mario for me that I'm really interested in. Splatoon, maybe. Um, ARMS, if it would cut you know if it came down on price i might consider it but 60 bucks just seems a wee bit too high from what i've seen of it so far now there's a game there's another game that i just saw a little tiny bit of today oh god what was it called snipper clip which is really bizarre it's like this weird like 2d puzzle game where you're these like two like they're they're like cloth character things and you, it's like a co-op puzzle game where like you you can snip part of the other character to like morph your body into like different shapes to complete puzzles like the one little part that I saw was like they had to try to get a ball into like a basketball hoop so like they cut one of the people's like to the top of their head so they were like a scoop and then they, like, try to scoop up the ball and then, like, jump on the other character's head to, like, get them up there to... It was, it's just a weird-looking thing. And it could be cool, you know? And I'm curious to see what they do with the Joy-Cons. Of course, there is there is Amiibo support in there. Um, I'd love to see another WarioWare. You know, with all the different control, like the Joy-Cons and the, the motion and the, uh, you know, the buttons and everything... Bring on more War uh, WarioWare, Rhythm Heaven. Bring those out again. And I want to see some more new stuff. Like, I want to see... You know, ARMS is cool, but, like, I, I want to see a new... A new, like... A new game with some... You know, not just another Mario or Zelda. Those are great. But, like, I want to see a new franchise or something that has some meat to it. You know, not a mini game collection... Not something really simple, but I want to see like a really, like a deep, some kind of a new deep game. Um, I'd love to see something like that come out of Nintendo. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But I just, this, of course, as usual, has gone on a little bit longer than I thought or anticipated or meant for it to go on. But, um, I, you know, I kind of wanted to talk about the Nintendo event last night and a little bit of what I've learned about today and I did look this afternoon I've been sort of toying with the idea you know everywhere you know within NES classic you know and they're hard to get a hold of you know people still can't find them I got lucky when I got mine um but they are actually taking pre-orders at a lot of different sites Amazon has been on and off all day like they'll have them and they'll go away they'll have them they'll go away Walmart Target GameStop um you said Walmart Target uh Best Buy um they are taking pre-orders for them and I checked Amazon earlier today, and I checked it a couple times just to see, and they were all not available. I could sign up for an for a email notification when they were, when I could try to pre-order. But then I did, I was stupid, and I kind of looked around a little bit more, and I happened to notice that I could get um, the core system and Zelda... And Zelda actually comes in three editions. They have the, the regular edition, the special edition, 
and the Master Edition. I even though it's kind of expensive, I kind of wanted the Master Edition because it had the the Special Edition and the Master Edition are pretty much the same, but they have like a like a cloth or like a cloth map of Hyrule. There's a, like a, a Zelda case for your Switch, uh, some kind of a coin, a couple other odds and ends, a soundtrack. And then the Master Edition had a kind of a little Master, store, master Sword statue, which I thought was kind of neat. But everywhere was sold out of the Master Edition, and I already do have, which I still, I really got to do another Geek Loot Spotlight video for those. I got to show you those. I do actually have two different types of, like, more life-size replicas of the Master Sword and Hylian Shield. So, yeah, there is that. So, I may or may not have uh, pre-ordered the the system from the system and the uh, Legend of Zelda. So I may or may not be able to play them uh, in early March. Yes, I did. I pre-ordered the gray system and the special edition of Zelda because I figured, you know what, I'm probably going to want some sort of a sleeve or a case thingy and a Zelda one sounds pretty cool. So you know what? Let's just get that. And uh, yeah. So we'll get a case for it. And get that out of the way. Um, so about the only other thing I'll get is a Pro Controller eventually. See how the Joy-Cons work. But eventually I'm sure I'll get a Pro Controller. But uh, And I'm very curious. I haven't heard anything. There's been a couple of tweets uh, that people aren't sure of yet. But I really want to, I also want to know... If, you know, what Microsoft and Sony has done as far as starting to implement accessibility on a system level, I'm curious if Nintendo has actually, you know, they talk about, we want to make this stuff available and accessible to everyone. Well, um, I'm curious if they have bothered to uh, implement anything on a system level. I think it might be too much to hope. I'm guessing it's too much to hope that there is any kind of like, uh, you know, equivalent to narrator or voiceover or something, but, you know, even having larger text or something. Um, but that is something that I will hopefully be able to tell you guys about sometime in March. Uh, the next month or so, month or two is going to be freaking crazy. Um, just super busy at work. And then I did find out. I'm currently in the process of planning. Um, turns out I am going to be going to CSUN this year at the end of February, early March. So right about the time that I'm going to get home from CSUN, I should hopefully have my shiny new Switch and Legend of Zelda and be able to explore some of that. And, of course, that's with everything else going on with the channel. So, lot to play with, a lot to look forward to uh, this year, uh, early this year. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Twitter at BGFH79. And until next time, I will talk to you guys again later.